Good afternoon. We're ready to start. Uh, this is an exciting day for Saluki Athletics. Uh, we have the two men uh, responsible for that excitement uh, with us here today. Uh, Director of Athletics Jerry Kill and new head coach Brian Mullins. Uh, we'll open it up for questions at the end, but uh, we'll go ahead and get started with uh, opening remarks by uh, Coach Kill. Coach. Thank you for the ovation. <laughs> Appreciate it very much. No, uh, you know, I'll make this brief because this, this is not my day. This is Brian Mullen's day. Uh, I will just tell you that uh, when I was talking about what we were going to do, hiring somebody, that we had to get the right fit, and uh, that's what we looked for, and uh, Brian is the right fit. Um, wanted to get somebody that was going to get our kids to play hard, and there's no question that he will, get, he will do that. No, you can tell that the way he played. Uh, players reflect the coach. Uh, you can tell the way where he came from, kids played. I will also add that uh, uh, from uh, Coach Mosier from Loyola, you know, you're always looking for a coach that kids want to play for and, 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 you, and as parents you want them to care for. And uh, the players love Brian Mullins at Loyola, and that's important in coaching. There's no question about that. And then the other thing, you know, we talked about is toughness. And uh, I want a tough, tough team. And uh, there's no question we checked the box with that. I wanted a high quality, high intellect, you know, basketball coach. And he checked the box with that because he's off the charts in that area. And I sat and visited with him. and. And on his interview is when I walked out, I said, man, I, I, I was expecting him to be good, but I had no idea the intellect of basketball uh, that he had. And uh, the other thing is I wanted a professional, a first-class person and a professional. And we got that with Brian Mullen. So uh, there's no question, and I know we will be successful, and we'll do it the right way and we can't pick a perfect person that is the right fit than Brian Mullen. So with that, I introduce you to our new head basketball coach here at Southern Illinois, Brian Mullins. Thank you guys. I want to first by thanking Chancellor Don and Coach Kill for giving me this incredible opportunity to be able to come back home and represent you know, my alma mater, this university, once again. I want to start also by thanking my parents, my mom and my dad, for instilling the values of hard work, humility, honesty, self-discipline, and loyalty. You know, they, they say you are who you are because of your parents, and I couldn't be more blessed to have two of the best parents by my side every single day. I need to thank my brothers, Brendan and Mike, for always being my biggest supporters through my playing career and through my coaching career. I want to thank my girlfriend, Katie, who's here with me today. She's agreed to go on this crazy, chaotic, emotional, but unbelievably rewarding journey known as coaching with me. Um, I want to thank a couple of my coaching mentors, guys who have always been there for me, starting with Chris Lowry, uh, he believed in me as a player, and I think, truthfully, he believes in me even now more as a coach. Uh, Porter Mosier, for giving me an opportunity to start in this profession and for allowing me to help create a vision where we create a culture that would produce results rather than trying to produce results to create a culture. I also want to thank Rodney Watson, Jack Owens, Daniel Robinson, Brad Korn, and Emmanuel Dildy for all their advice and guidance through the years. You know, a lot of people, you know, especially this last week, were asking me, you know, what makes SIU so special? Why do you want to be the head coach at SIU? And for me, it, you know, it comes down to the tradition, the people, and the future of the program. For the tradition, there's no other team in the Valley that has SIU basketball's history and tradition. You know, to be able to play at this university and wear the Saluki jersey, the same jersey that, you know, Walt Frazier, Seymour Bryson, Greg Sterick, Mike Glenn, 
Kent Williams, Jermaine Deerman, Darren Brooks, Jamal Tatum, all the great players that have played here. It's truly, truly special to me. And now to be a head coach at this university where, you know, Coach Weber, Coach Painter, Coach Lowry, you know, so many great coaches have been here. And I think, you know, every coach has their own style and every coach has their own philosophy. But I think the coaches that have had success here, the coaches that have won here, truly realize that in order to win at a place like SIU, you have to find kids who play hard and who have a chip on their shoulder. You know, onto the people. Um, the people are what makes this place so special. I've said it before, and I'll always say it. You know, like I mentioned before, to have the guidance and the confidence of Chancellor Dunn and Coach Kill is, is amazing. And to be able to work and to be able to learn from Coach Kill every single day going forward is something, you know, I, I, I truly relish and I cannot wait, you know, to learn from him. Um, you know, I, I, to be able to be involved with Dr. Bryson and Dr. Bardo and be around Mike Reese again and all the people who are great ambassadors for this university, you know, is something I'm truly looking forward to. To be in a department filled with coaches like Coach Hill and Coach Stein and Coach Henderson and Coach Allen and Coach Blaylock is an incredible honor for me. And, you know, I know all the coaches, you know, at this place truly believe they strive for and demand it, excellence on and off the court of the field. And I'm definitely going to be one of those coaches. Um, you know, I think the future of SIU basketball, uh, I think this is the best time to be here. I'm so excited to be the head coach. There's not a better time, I think, this school, you know, walking around the facilities, seeing the turnout, seeing the reaction, the passion, the fan base, um, it, it, it's amazing. You know, to all the Saluki supporters, to all the alumni, to the people of Southern Illinois, it's because of your pride and passion for SIU basketball that nowhere else in the Valley has. That's what makes it so special. The people here are the difference. You know, I can't wait to coach my first game in the arena. <laughs> I can't wait to coach my first sellout game in the arena. Um, you know, it, it's, it's, it, it's a tr true honor for me um, to be here right now. And, you know, I truly believe with every ounce of my body that this place is special and that when you have a group of young men and a coaching staff and an administration and a university and a community who are all pulling in the same direction, who all want the same thing, that that is when special, unforgettable memories are created. And that's what I hope and I know will happen here. Thank you again for allowing me to be your head coach and go dogs. So we'll take questions. If you could just raise your hand and then coach can point and uh, if you can ask your question. Go ahead, Brian. Oh. Hi, Brian, the Egyptian. Welcome. Uh, so right now, as there's this transition, what are your plans on keeping the players together as a family moving forward? Yeah, for sure. Uh, I met with the players earlier today. They were all great. Um, you know, for me, I'm a relationship coach. You know, I have to get to know the players to trust them. I want the players to trust me. So, you know, the only way to build trust with players and build relations is, is spend time with them. And that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to spend time with the guys. I'm going to get to know them. I'm going to find out about their backgrounds some more. Obviously, you know, I think an advantage that I have is that I coach in this league. You know, I know these guys. I've you know, scouted against them. So I know their basketball games. I just don't know their family histories. I don't know what makes them tick. I don't know, you know why they love the game. And that's what I'm going to find out. Uh, how, did, Here, go how, how did the, the senior guards, Cook and uh, McGill, are they going to stay for next year, or have they indicated either one that they want to transfer or something? Uh, they haven't indicated they want to transfer. You know, like I said, I met with them today, and they were great. You know, unbelievable young men, and you know, uh, we had great conversations. And you know, like I said, it's about a relationship with them. I truly believe that. And you know, I'm going to reach out to their family members, you know, people involved, and you know, I think, you know, with them, I think. I have an opportunity to really form a great relationship and you know I explained to them you know we had two guards last year at Loyola uh, Marcus Towns and Clayton Custer 
they were both graduate seniors and they both could have gone to any school in the country and they both chose to come back to Loyola this year because they realized that being here for three, four years, that the comfortability factor allowed them to have the best success to have a great senior year. And I explained that aspect to them, and I think that related to them a little bit as well. Have you been able to sign or to talk to sign players that we've signed already? I a kid from Evanston. And yeah, I reached out to the families and the kids last night. Um, I talked to Lance. I talked to his dad. Um, I'm waiting. To, I left a message for Evan and talked to Chris Payton as well. So I've reached out to them. Yeah. Because there's no learning curve. Let's yeah, and you know, for me being a first-time head coach, I think that's huge. I, I know this league. I know the team's rosters. Um, you know, I, I know what we need uh, to make us successful. I know what type of players win championships in this league, and you know, I feel comfortable. You know, with everything in place here, and you know, under the leadership of Coach Kill, that you know, it's going to happen here. Brian, can you take us through just the last, I guess, two days from coaching in Omaha with your team, losing in the NIT, and here you are a Thursday afternoon? Yeah, it's, it, it's been a, a crazy couple days for sure. Um, you know, coaching, you know, to start coaching in NIT with those seniors, you know, those, those two guys, Marcus Towns and Clayton Custer, you know, those, those guys, you know, I'll, I'll be forever connected with those guys. So. You know, knowing that it could be their last game, hoping it wasn't, you know, I was trying to do my best to prepare them and the team to be as successful as possible. And, you know, after the loss, it was very hard. You know, there's a lot of tears in the locker room. And then knowing I had to move on, but excited about this opportunity, um, you know, it's just been a whirlwind. But it's, it, you know, it, it's, it's been awesome for me to be able to see, again, the, the fan outreach and the outpour of support. Um, you know, from everyone down here. Can you tell us when you accepted the job, I guess the timetable, and or when it was offered or, or something like that? Yeah, uh, Coach Kill offered it to me on Sunday night, and, you know, I told Coach Kill I accepted it. I didn't sign anything until yesterday. So, I didn't, you know, there was negotiations and stuff that I had no idea, you know, was out of, but <laughs> I signed the contract, I think, maybe – I don't know, 2 o'clock yesterday or 3 o'clock yesterday or something like that. Let's get Matt in the front row. Yeah, Coach, the, the roster has six seniors graduating, and you see a lot of freshmen on there, a lot of red shirts that are going to be freshmen next year. You're looking at the landscape of the roster, how well do you feel you are prepared for success in the short term? Uh, you know, I think we have some work to do this spring. You know, I'm excited about it. You know, I, I can't wait to get out recruiting to wear the SIU logo and, and talk to kids and get into – you know, families' houses and explain my vision for the program and what type of kids I believe are successful. Um, I think we have some great players returning as well. You know, I think the other staff has done a great job and, you know, they have high character guys in the locker room. Mike in the back. Brian, was there something you felt like, even though you knew of Coach Kill and he knew of you, something you felt like you had to sell him in that he allowed you as a coach? Um, you know, it was really my first time having a sit-down conversation with Coach Kill. So obviously, I, I knew a ton of people who knew him, and I, I know of him, and um, the respect that everyone has for him is, um, you know, really what made this job really appealing for me as well. And I think the biggest thing for myself is just, you know, I wanted to let him know that I was ready to be a head coach, that I've prepared for this, you know, really since the day I started coaching. That, um, and especially at Southern Illinois, too, a school where I play that and where I know you can be successful. Back to Brian. So looking at this past year, a Final Four run, and taking into consideration coaches you worked with in the past, what strategies are you bringing in from those key moments uh, to move this program forward? Yeah, I think offensively, um, you know, I think Loyola has been, you know, one of the best field goal percentage offensive teams in the country the past couple of years and you know I believe in, in playing with pace and, and having good spacing and having good ball movement with player movement you know I believe the ball should move it should be 0.5 seconds pass shoot or dribble you know so I want a selfless team you know I want guys to make the extra pass and defensively you know in the valley you got to be able you know to win games on the defensive end you know if you look at it you know the last 10 years it's like the, top three teams in the league are the top three defensive teams. You know, I believe in five guys playing as one on defense. Let's go to Wes. 
three point three part right? um, there's been like this grassroots movement to get you here for two years among the fans were, were you aware of that uh not i mean i was aware of it as of you know when this whole process was going on and i think there was a story that came out i don't know a week ago or a week and a half ago and you know, I have friends down here. I have lifelong relationships down here. So you always hear rumors and stuff like that. But, you know, I never thought of anything of it until last week, you know. And then, uh, what, what is it about Brian Mullen that so captured the imagination of Steve? You know, I, I hope it's my work ethic. I hope it's my uh, toughness. I hope it's my self-confidence. And, you know, I hope it's my presence on the court and coaching off the court. Um, you know, I, there's nothing magical. There's nothing crazy about me. You know, I believe in working hard and, and doing your best, and I believe in relationships with the guys. And, you know, I got to be able to pull the most out of every single player. And that's why I love coaching is because it's not just about the X's and O's. And then the third part is, is that, does that put any more, any more I mean, there's always pressure to win. Yeah. I mean, this, this is a result-oriented business. <laughs> For sure. No, knowing that, does that put any more pressure on, on, on you, or is it just – yeah, no, I mean, I'm a coach, you know, I'm a, I'm a head coach. I'm expected to win games. If I was at Southern Illinois or, you know, a Division II, Division Three school, I mean, it would be the same for me. You know, I'm going to do things the same way. I'm going to do things the right way. I'm going to recruit the right type of kids. And, um, you know, I, I truly believe, though, if you do that, good things will happen. Let's go to Mark first and then Richard. Yeah, in your statement, you talked about uh, results following. I said, you know, our kind of model at uh, Loyola with, with, with Coach Mosier, you know, we wanted to create a culture that produced results. So we wanted to have that foundation. We wanted to create this culture where we didn't talk about the end goal. We didn't talk about the results. We didn't talk about winning an NBC championship or going to a Final Four. And, you know, I think that's how you have to do it. You got to, you know, buy into the process. You got to be obsessed with your culture and you got to protect it every single day. And, you know, rather than, hey, I want to win 20 games and hopefully the culture's really good later if I can win 20 games. You know, I think if you can build the culture, you build the locker room, and you do it with the right coaching staff and the right administration, then the results, the championships, the NCAA tournaments will take care of themselves. Go ahead, Richard. You're, you're the head coach. You build up your staff. Are you looking for staff to have now in place? What are your views on that? Yeah, I'm definitely looking at it and going through it and, you know, I understand, you know, as a head coach, you're only as good as your staff. And, you know, it's, you know, a huge decision for me, and I'm sorting that out right now. But the one thing I know is I'm going to have great people on my staff who care about the guys and who care about SIU and who represent themselves and this university the right way. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Drake, uh, Coach DeVries did an amazing job. Um, you know, I think in the Valley, mid-major basketball, I think you have to build your ways and uh, build your team in all different ways, you know. So you got to get the right type of kids, whether that's a graduate senior, uh, a junior college transfer, a high school a freshman, they got to fit what you're trying to do. And I think you can do a little bit of everything to build it. I mean, if you look at our Final Four team last year, you know, we had one junior college transfer, we had two trans division one transfers, we have four freshmen. So, you know, I think you just gotta get the right type of kids on your roster. Todd? How hard was it was it to say goodbye to Loyola and those players? Yeah, it was it was extremely um, tough um, just because of the relationship with them. And like I told them all when I accepted this position, uh, our relationship isn't over. You know, it's not about basketball with those guys. Um, I know their families. I, you know, I know their girlfriends, um, you know, and I'll always be in touch with those guys. And, you know, for the seniors who just left, um, you know, those guys will be connected forever for sure. Brian, looking at the student body, how do you plan on getting the students to game, the students interacting with the team? What do you plan on changing in order to build up that attendance? Yeah, we have to we have to cultivate that energy on campus. You know, we have to, you know, get with resident housing. We have to get the freshmen out of the dorms and into the arena. We gotta get with Greek life. Um, you know, we gotta be creative in different ways, different fundraising, different advertisement, promotional things. Um, because the arena, you know, it's one of the best things about this 
you know, university is, is that atmosphere in that arena. And, you know, when the students are in there, it's an unbelievably hard place to play. And we have to have that home court advantage. Go ahead, Todd. When you talk to the recruits, what was their reaction? Um, uh, you know, the, so Lance, Lance was excited. I, I mean, I know a lot of those guys because they're local guys, they're Illinois guys. Um, you know, he was excited, you know, you know, I told all those guys, we'll talk again when I get back, um, after, after today. Um, like I said, I left a message for Evan Taylor. I didn't get a hold of him, but I think he just tried to call me back an hour ago. And, and Chris was the same way. Chris was excited. You know, Chris uh, knows my brother Brendan really well from being at Illinois State and being in Bloomington. So I, I know Chris as well a little bit. Time for one or two more? Yeah, you know, like I said, um, I believe this place is special because of the people here and the fan base here. I don't think in the Valley there's more passionate fans who love basketball. And I think with the facilities they have now, there's no reason why, you know, this shouldn't be, you know, a top program in the league every year. You know, obviously, you know, when I was playing, there was three, four, five teams from the conference getting into the NCAA tournament. So it's hard to judge, um, you know, how many bids should the league get or does that define your success? But, you know, I truly believe this program should compete for championships year in and year out. Last one. Coach, you were uh, all academic when you were here, uh, first team, and then all American. And I mean, Barry worked really hard to get us back to kind of that status. What, what are your thoughts on him just sharing the importance of student athletes focusing on the student part? Yeah, for sure. Uh, you know, it's non-negotiable in terms of going to class, um, in terms of, you know, passing all your classes. And, you know, I truly believe, you know, if you take care of everything off the court, usually that translates to on the court success as well. Um, you know, at, at Loyola, you know, we have the top graduation rate in the country. You know, academic success, success and having kids who want to get a degree, you know, is extremely important to me, you know. The kids are going to graduate. The kids are going to go to class. Um, you know, definitely going to make sure of that. Thank you, Brian. Thanks, Coach. Thanks. Thanks.